Welcome back to Al's Kitchen. I've got something really exciting on my sleeve, another lamb address. Now I've done lamb address before, but not like this. This one's quick, it's simple, it's really easy. And I would argue with you that it's the most flavoursome address I've ever done. Today I'll be cooking in a pressure cooker. Now if you haven't got a pressure cooker, get one. Why? Because when you add tremendous amounts of pressure to heat, you will produce tender meats every time, whether that be beef or lamb, no matter the cut. They're really cheap to buy, and apart from anything else, as an added bonus, these curries can be produced in as little as 25 minutes. Obviously, you've got to prep your, your stuff first, that's another 10 minutes, but really quick. Anyway, so without further ado, let's check out all the ingredients. So here are the glorious ingredients that you'll need for this lamb dress masala. So here I have a kilo of diced lamb. Now, I've diced it myself by taking off the bone. Um, I bought a leg of lamb. I would advise this, quite often you can get legs of lamb special offer. Um, it's a pretty good cut of meat. Here I have two diced onions. And here, two tins of chopped tomatoes. Here I have a tin of coconut milk. Now with this curry, you might be thinking, oh God, why coconut milk? Well, I can assure you, and you need to trust me on this, that it does not taste of coconut. This gives the curry a lovely body to the gravy that you'll be producing later. Here I have three tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste. Now all I've done here is blended an equal amount of ginger with garlic, added some oil into a mini hand blender, and I've blended it to make this homemade fresh ginger garlic paste. Um, please do not use the shop bought one. Um, the reason for this is it contains preservatives, which gives it a vinegary flavor and it will ruin your curries. Right, let's get on to the spices. So here I have one tablespoon of extra hot chili powder. You can adjust this as you see fit. Okay, so here I have one tablespoon of garam masala. Um, again, this is shop bought garam masala. I think the brand I used was Raja or TRS. Here I have two tablespoons of mild madras curry powder. The brand I use again is Raja, but I also use TRS from time to time. Here I have a teaspoon of turmeric. This is to add nice color to the curry. And here I have two tablespoons of tomato puree. Here I have half teaspoon of cardamom powder. Now you can add cardamom pods if you like, but I just find that sometimes uh, the shells get in the way and then if you put the seeds in, they become gritty. So you can actually buy this in the shops as a powder. Here I have two teaspoons of salt, but at the end of the curry when you add this, I want you to add the salt to taste. Uh, just keep adding a little at a time until you produce a lovely flavour. Uh, when you add salt to any tomato based dish, which a madras is, you will really bring out the flavours of the tomatoes and take away the rawness. And here I have two teaspoons of sugar. If you're a healthy person, unlike me, you can add honey, um, if that makes you feel any better. And here we've got some single fresh cream and some low fat natural yogurt. And we will be using four tablespoons of each at the end. And to garnish some fresh coriander. Like my earrings, no, just for the sound news of my AirPods, it solves a big problem for me because I always have a problem with sound in my videos, you might have noticed. But these I can be uh, further away from the phone and still get good sound. Anyway, so let's get cooking. Let's turn on the heat. And we're going to use copious amounts of uh, olive oil. Um, olive oil is healthy, so don't worry about that. And by the time you portion this out to your guests and your family, uh, it's a really small amount that you'll be eating anyway. So I'm just covering the base of the pan with that. So we're just going to bring this up to temperature and then we're going to fry our onions. So anyway, tell me, how's everyone been? What's everyone been up to? Tell me in the comments below. And. Um, yeah, my old camera broke, so uh, I've not been able to film videos. And I don't really like using the phone because the phone's slim and hard to handle. Get your cups of tea, enjoy the show. Cheers, everyone. In goes the onion. This is going to form part of the base. I bet you're all relieved I'm doing a curry without base gravy. Base gravy is lovely and BIR is lovely, but God, it's a pain making huge amounts of that all the time. So we're just going to pop these down for a little while. 
And while they're softening, I'm just going to put all the spices in a single bowl so that when I throw them in, they all go in together. You can watch me do that. So there's my bowl. There's the turmeric, the mold of best coat powder, the garam masala, chili powder, cardamom powder, and uh, here's the garlic and ginger paste, which will be going in shortly. And that leaves behind the tomato puree, the salt, the sugar, and uh, the tins of tom. The onion softened a little. Remember, this can be absolutely pulverized once the pressure comes to get going. So now I'm going to add the garlic and ginger paste. considering um, I've been away for a little while, how my uh, subscribers have been increasing and increasing. So thanks everybody that follows the channel, loves the channel and supports it. Um, obviously you love the content, I'm really happy about that. I'm hoping to produce more now. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, just give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends and leave a comment. So now the garlic and ginger paste has uh, mellowed out a little. Now I'm going to add. Now I'm going to add the spices. I'll well, turn the heat down at this point. We don't want to burn the spices or it's game over. So there's all the spices. Fry them out a little. I'm just going to add a splash of water. Anytime you feel that um, the pan is too hot and you want to prevent burning, just add a little drop of water, move some things up a little. That's that job done. And now I'm going to coat the lamb in all those spices and the onion and garlic mix. Now, when you chop the lamb, I don't chop the lamb too small. Uh, the reason is that it loses lots of its moisture and you'll end up probably with little tight uh, balls of meat. Um, obviously in the pressure cooker it's going to get really tender so it could dissolve into nothing. So I, I do use pretty good chunks of lamb. You don't really have to brown the lamb either to be honest because it's going to be cooked in the pressure cooker. What I'm just doing now is coating it in the spices. Add the two tins of tomatoes. Have another swig of drink. Give it a stir. And now I'm going to add the coconut milk. Now with the coconut milk, sometimes the coconut solids separate from the water. So just give it a good stir to make sure it's nice and milky. Um, I said you before ready. But this curry does not taste of coconut. You've got to trust me. So if you don't like coconut, don't let that put you off. Again, mix that through. It looks pretty pale in colour at the moment, um, but once it cooks, it does produce a lovely deep, rich red colour. And last, tomato puree. Seal it. Once you get the hiss, you start 25 minutes and then the curry effectively will be nearly done. I'll be back in 25. Okay, so once it's safe to open the pot, we're going to open it. Um, I just wanted to mention, I don't think I mentioned, that once it uh, reaches steam point, you turn the gas down to around halfway or just less. It keeps the steam coming out, but doesn't boil dry or burn at the bottom. Anyway, so let's uh, take the lid off. 
And there we go, a lovely madras. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and show you close up. Okay, so once you've taken the lid off, we wanna turn it back on the heat again. This is just finishing off. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add the salt and the sugar. Here we go, so we've got the salt and the sugar. One, two, and we're gonna add in four tablespoons of single cream. One, two, three, four. And then the same again with the yogurt. Stir. I can't wait for you to try this one. Just going to give the uh, gravy a little taste, see whether it needs to be seasoned anymore. No, I mean, it's absolutely perfect for that. So we're just going to that to the bubble and then and basically it's ready to serve. See the gorgeous sauce, how, how succulent this meat is, how rich that gravy is. Now I think if you're a madras lover, you can't afford not to make this curry. Lovely tender morsels of meat. garnish with a little freshly chopped coriander. Lamb madras masala. Time for the taste test. Oh, there we go. There's a nice piece of lamb there. Let's, let's have a go. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm, oh my god. I mean the meat melts in the mouth. Beautiful flavour of lamb. Rangers out as well. Mmm. I'm going to have a lovely dinner tonight. Anyway guys, you've seen the video, now start cooking. I hope you've enjoyed the content and if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the uh, description below. Let me know what colours you like, what you've been up to um, since I last saw you all and what you plan to do during this lockdown. I'm going to get on eating this lovely curry and uh, next time I see you I've got another little surprise up my sleeve. Um, the only clue I'm going to give you is, uh, um, do you like Wagamama's? I'm out and I'm out there.